Welcome, graphing with Google Sheets. So I recently ran into a problem where I wanted two plots on one graph and I was having a couple of little issues. So I thought I'd make a little video uh, to show the workaround that I found. Um, I teach physics and in that course, we have students measure the time and distance of a fast car and the time and distance of a slow car. And what I want them to do is put uh, both of these onto the same graph. So graphing with Google Sheets is pretty straightforward. Whatever you highlight, that's what it will graph. Uh, include the labels and it will automatically put the labels on the graph for you, which is kind of nice. Uh, so you just highlight whatever you want. Uh, click insert chart and voila. I, mine always goes to the default column chart. Um, so now I'm going to come over here. Another little problem. Uh, make sure that use column B as labels is selected. A lot of times that'll say use column A. And there is our graph. Now to add a trend line, uh, just double click on any points. So you pull this up, scroll on down, and that will give you a best fit linear line. And I want students to know the equation, so we put the equation on there as well. And this 36.8 represents the slope of the line. All right. Um, and so there's the graph of the fast car. Now I have students do the same thing, but with the slow car. Insert charts. Uh, the only thing I want to do this time is I want to uh, differentiate it. So I'll make it a little color, different color. Um, looks like my settings were safe, so that's good. Add a trend line and the equation, and there we go. Now, what I want students to notice is that the slow car and the fast car have significantly different slopes. However, when you just look at the general shape, it doesn't look too much different due to the formatting of the axis. So I want them to go on the same graph. Now, I know that in Google Sheets, if you highlight multiple columns, it will graph that. And so if I just highlight all of this stuff, uh, I'm going to do an insert chart. And uh, let's go back down to scatter. And there we go. Use column B as headers. And all of a sudden, we have this. Now, uh, this right here, I'm going to change this to blue. Um, to blue. No, it's not changing. All right, there we go. Blue. Okay, and then, which is fine, which is great. This is all, all fine and dandy. Um, I'm going to go uh, put a trend line on here, and we should see the same equation of the line. And we see 36.8. 36.8, that lines up perfect. However, the problem arises with uh, this set right here. Um, I'm going to click on the red set right there. Just try to highlight that. There we go. A trend line, and as you'll notice... Uh, we're going to use the equation here. And this 1.69 slope is significantly different than this 21.8. Now what's happening here is that you only have one option for the x-axis. Um, whereas the y-axis, if you go in a series, uh, you can select different ones. So this is actually graphing um, time versus time. Okay, um, which is not good. Now, if all of your time data is exactly the same and the distance um, was different, then it would be fine. But um, if your independent variable uh, is different for the different data sets, then um, it's not going to work. So let's get rid of this. And this is what I found. All right. So uh, take the data for the fast car. Uh, I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to put it just down here. Uh, paste. Uh, and then I'm going to take the time data for uh, this guy as well. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to just put it right down below. And where's the paste button? There it is. Bam. Okay. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this distance, copy, uh, with, um, and paste. I'm going to put this distance here. So as you see, this uh, top part is... Uh, the fast car and the slow part is the bottom car. And let's put in the titles. And I'm going to paste. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, time and distance of, I'm going to call this distance of the fast car. 
And I'm going to call this one, so enlarge that a little bit. And I'm going to call this the distance of the slow one. All right. Now, this looks kind of weird, but now I'm going to do what I did before that didn't work, but it'll work now, hopefully. So now I'm just going to highlight everything here and just do the same thing. Insert chart. And voila, we have two graphs. Now I'm going to click on the blue. Let's just verify that that's correct. And label, uh, use equation. Oh, we have this slope. That slope matches up to that one. Love it. Let's go to the red and the trend line. And the label, use equation. And all of a sudden we have both graphs on each chart here. The 21.8 slope matches up with the slow car. And the 36.8 matches up with the fast car. We have achieved both uh both cars on the same graph and now you can uh students can visually see the difference between the slope between the fast and the slow car so let me move this out of the way uh once again just uh kind of moving the data around a little bit and you can get what you want and like i said if the independent variable or what goes on the x-axis um, if those don't change between experiments like let's say Let's say I would have uh, had certain times and they would have measured the distance of those times, then I probably wouldn't have ran into this problem. Um, but if the independent variable is changing, this is one way that will work very easily. So um, thanks for watching. Hope this helped you. And comment if that's what people do. <laughs> thanks.